dear friends. Thank you very much for your gracious presence and your readiness to discuss with the church in India in her mission to serve the community and the cross section of our population with all commitment and joy. And this is the 33rd time that the Catholic Bishops' Conference is assembling as a body of all the Catholic bishops in India. And we know we have 174 dioceses, the Catholic dioceses in India, and 204 bishops, who, among whom there are retired bishops, also the bishops and so on. And our conference is the fourth largest conference in the world. The CBCI is the fourth largest conference in the Catholic world. And we have taken the theme for the 33rd Assembly is United in Diversity for a Mission of Mercy and Witness. United in Diversity for a Mission of Mercy and Witness. Our country is a rich country with its patrimony of diversity. And the church in India, especially the Catholic Church in India, is also united in diversity as well. We have the three <coughs> ecclesial traditions in India the Roman tradition, the Syro Malabar tradition, and the Syro Malagara tradition, and we call it in our ecclesiastical terminology the Rite or Church or Sui Yodis Church. United in diversity, that is a mission for the church as well as for the nation today. Gone are those days of thinking, a uniform the system, a uniformity or the unity is seen only in terms of uniformity. It has gone beyond that. And we have, we have been living in India as well as in the whole Catholic Church, the theme and the beautiful ecclesial praxis of living together, united in diversity. And in India, we have been living this motto as a nation, to an extent sometime even before the independence, but continued gloriously after the independence as a united nation comprising different realities in this country. So the church and the, and the country, we have certain similarities united in diversity. And India is progressing with this basic richness of its tradition. Everywhere we see in a diverse form of witnessing our unity. And the church in India is going to reflect during these uh, Bishop's Assembly, that how we can witness the mission of mercy to everyone. As we are progressing in all sectors of human life, we need to be more sensitive to the needs of the poor and the poorest of the poor and the people who have no voice and people who are sidelined due to various reasons. We uphold the value of diversity and unity, of course, and we uphold the value of secularism in this country and the value of democracy and keeping everyone together for an integral growth of the nation. For the part of the church, we are ready to extend our wholehearted cooperation 
in the mission of our nation, that all grow together, all grow with dignity, all grow in its totality. We have to empower our nation, empower our families, empower our villages, our states, and other country as a whole to go ahead with the determined will that we will include everyone on our pilgrimage. So the, 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 the eight, nine days of reflection here at St. John's of the bishops in India, we are confident that we will bring in more refreshing air and new method of serving the country and new method of including the sidelined people, those who are at the periphery, those who are still need to be brought into the mainstream of civic life. This is our commitment to the church, commitment to the nation as well. The church reflects how it should manifest its Christian identity in India, basing on the gospel, basing on the Catholic teaching, and basing on the living experience, the exigencies of today. And we have the presence of uh, His Eminence Cardinal Charles Doe from Myanmar, who is our uh, esteemed guest of honor, who is already here. He will address the gathering. And our Pastor Ignuncio is already here. He will be participating in the inaugural Mass. And uh, he will have, uh, of course, his personal interventions and uh, discussions with the bishops individually and so on. And the St. John's, as you all know, this is a, a prestigious institution of the Chagari Church in India. Also witnessing the, the health care, the health care mission of the church. As we have the presentation of the papers in the sessions. We will have more information, more reflections shared on the matter could be distributed as and when needed and to be present by the Secretariat as well. At the end of the conference there will be also a press conference in which we will be able to share with you what we have arrived at. If that press conference is not possible within the short time and so on, we'll be able to give you a press note what we have arrived at and that will serve the communication in depth. This uh, coming together of the, the bishops, the Catholic bishops in India will empower our country to which we all are confident. Our coming together here in Bangalore will enrich or contribute significantly for the growth of our nation by our praise, definitely by our reflections and our assured commitment to the nation as we need a solid, ongoing, support to empower our secular nation. We wish that we could bring in new commitment from the part of our faithful, our clergy, religious and the bishops so that the church will be more committed and more interested, zealous in her mission to the poor. Our mission is that of mercy, of compassion, promotion, encouragement, and walking together. May 
the spirit of the Lord bring in more confidence to the minds of the bishops that we are called to serve the church, to serve the nation with a united vision in a diversified manner. The details of uh, the conference, the assembly, if you like to have, or Secretary General Bishop Chedo will be able to share with you. On the theme, what I have said, we have also different people speaking to us, which is already given to you, that the sheet will be also given to you. Read the names and talks of that is already there. So this is what I would like to share with you at the beginning of the, of the assembly. And uh, we are committed to the gospel. We are committed to the whole Catholic Church under the leadership of Pope Francis. And we are committed to our beloved nation, India, with our commitment and our spiritual communion. If you have anything, anything of, on the matter, to be clarified, it is time now. Anything else? No, no circulators. You have to be circulated. It is mostly about the proceedings of the, the protocol of the conference. Okay. Who all are going to speak? Who are going to share and so on? Even during the conference, as and when needed, communications will be given to you as it is noted by the Secretary. Your Eminence, what is, uh, could you elaborate a little more on that, uh, what you call, worrying scenario in the country? The country is facing different challenges. Economic poverty is there, and the need of uh, reintegrating the nation, and also to make sure that the constitution is truly kept in the life of the citizens today. The constitutional guarantee of every citizen of this country to believe, to practice, to propagate their faith. And uh, humanitarian consideration should not be dealt with or should not be coupled with religious color. For example, the Dalit issue in India. Dalit. There should not be any distinction between Dalit Hindu, Dalit Christian, Dalit Muslim. The very term Dalit itself is enough to note that these people need more support. And as we grow further in economic terms and in the global scenario, we are receiving wider appreciation from, from different parts of the world. It is our, our obligation to ensure that all people are with us, irrespective of uh, religious and ethnic affiliations or linguistic affiliations. The country has to grow together. The country has to grow together with all its population. And the economic issues, concern, and so on, and uh, that all are familiar with, which, which is not our subject also to discuss how we are going to make India, in the economic terms, in a better situation. That respective people will share. But we as a Christian community in India, with 2,000 years of history here in this country, 
and always at the service of the poor and the needy of this nation, could prophetically and confidently say, we need more attention on the people's need. And to have the spiritual life ensured is one of the most basic needs. And to which our constitution says, yes, you have the right. So there should not be any 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 block from any corner. So these are the these are the scenes which we face today. Religion should not be a biased fact of separating people. See when ministers in the government itself say that constitution should be changed. So what is it is it not more worrying? I see, if you take them as individuals, they have the freedom. If you take them as just citizens, people have the freedom to say what they believe. But as someone who has taken oath, basing on the constitution, we, in my personal opinion, we cannot say that we should not speak at all about constitution, but there are some guarantees, there are some basic things enshrined in the constitution. If that is touched or attacked or questioned, then naturally we have further more questions. So there are people in the responsible positions should not sideline the sacredness of the constitution. There are recent states of attacks on Christian institutions, and CBC has been at the forefront of you know, working with the government, mitigating those attacks, and bringing about normalcy in the situation. What more steps should CBC take to ensure that there are no recurrences of such things? Uh, I must see, we have been from the part of the conference, we have been trying to meet the responsible ministers and sometimes even the prime minister and so on, uh, and discussing with them that what concern we have. But you know, realistically, you see, the democratic setup, vote banks matters a lot. Those who are not vote bank, sometimes they are sidelined. But we have the advantage of being in conversation with a lot of good-minded people in this country. So I think we need to take more steps in talking to those people and a good sense of lobbying and advocacy is they are to be promoted for the better situation of our country. More than the World Bank, we need to talk to more people on the need of revitalizing India. And this should not be, I, I would like to just share with you, when we say uh, about religion or about uh, this uh, hardcore fundamentalism based on religion, we are not speaking, uh, we, are, we are not speaking about one religion. We are not speaking about, for example, when we say these things, we are not speaking about Hinduism. This is the most uh, respected religion, one of the most respected religions in the world, which accommodates people with the dignity. But there are elements in every religious communities which are trying to break that sanctity of that religious ethos. This is what is happening. And conversion allegations have been thrown at. <coughs> and we are still at two percent. So what is CBCI's, how is CBCI trying to change that narrative? Oh, what do you mean really? So, no, this is, so why we are still at two percent, but the charges are alleged that we are into yeah. conversion and things. If yeah. we are into conversion, then our numbers should actually go up. But uh, that isn't the case. So which means that there are no conversions. 
that is self explanatory you know people accuse but still look at you the percentage of the population so, but the narrative is different that has been always the case whatever the christians do sometimes certain groups always say this is for conversion but how are you going to to answer that Still, while the population remains the same, that is one aspect. The other aspect, I don't want to keep myself mum on that. This is a country which guarantees religious freedom. Should I hide that? Anyone can choose any religion. Why should we hide that? By hiding that fact. are we doing justice to our constitution india has given that freedom and that genuine freedom to practice what they believe but the catholic church doesn't make any false propaganda or make any unconstitutional or unchristian methods to convert anyone in the country that we can we can watch we can promise if there are things there are cases like that they have they have we have the courts we have judicial system but unfortunately the the the, the events the incidents in satna and and also recently in saga yeah vidisha sometimes we feel that we are a community of 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 uh, of less importance sometimes people think that we cannot we cannot question their their right of say that we are sidelined accusing accusation is one thing and the reality is something different i went to satna secretary general went to sagar Adisha, for personal verification as well, we have been abiding by the rules and regulations <coughs> of the country. Still, accusation is there, or a demand is that we should also follow the practice of other religion, which sometimes is very painful. This can happen again. Uh, we don't we don't say that uh, it is is all over. it can happen again these symptoms but we expect a noble and bold gestures of confirmation from the part of the authorities that constitution will be held in its esteem order and a nobody is allowed to take laws as they think or as they wish and that is what that is what a country needs today thank you for your portrait view sir which most which i like more than other subject is fake news we are all you know deluged with fake news uh, particularly every religion is attacked by fake news uh, what does the cbci have any plan in place to counter fake news that the secretary general will be able to say come <laughs> as as you know fake news uh, are two types of fake news one is fake news in favor one is fake news against and uh, there are two types of fake news going around and especially on whatsapp and facebook these are the two dangerous areas on twitter they are more verified they can be fought back uh, on the as far as uh, whatsapp is concerned I said there are two types. One is what appears to be in our favor. For example, suddenly it will appear Christians are today eight percent, twelve percent, whatever. It not, does not necessarily originate from the Christian side. It originates from other people who want to provoke, provoke and say Christians have been converting their people. So that is one danger. What looks positive is actually negative. Uh, the other side is where. Suddenly, you will get news which says uh, 
so many churches have been burned somewhere. Now, immediately take action. Uh, that type of a news, which is again damaging because it is meant to polarize. And the third type of a news is where all sorts of things will go. Uh, people are being injected with poison on the roads. Be careful. Don't keep your phone anywhere. What can we do about it? See, um, we have to get together on the social media. Anybody who notices, as soon as I notice something, I go, I check back on internet. And immediately I put, this is a hoax. Just spread it around. The news was spread when Archbishop was arrested, yeah. for example. Like, no. We, at so that time, times. Yeah, several times. Yeah, so immediately I got back, I called the Archbishop. We verified that was wrong, we sent them. And only people, friends can help us disseminate it. I think that's the, that's the matter. Thank you. One minor point. You have mentioned the main times uh, unity and diversity. Is, is there any concrete tangible plan to get this uh, diversity unified? There's a very plain communication on that is we are making it even now. When we say India, you come from Karnataka, I come from Kerala, he comes from Goa, or uh, many, many realities. But we say we are Indians. How does we make it? How do we make it? By the very fact that we say we are Indians, it is manifested through our local affiliations, no? The same thing also in the church. We say we are Catholics in India. We have, I said at the beginning, the three traditions. But we have one church. Though we say we are from Kerala or Karnataka or, or uh, no, uh, any from the Northeast or Tamil Nadu or Andhra, but we say we are Indians. So it, it goes well hand in hand. And But in the civic life, we should take optimum care to ensure that this is practiced. One should not be sidelined because of its different appearance or different expression or different root. Though I'm a Christian or somebody else is a Hindu or a Muslim, we are Indians. But on the basis of that, one should not be sidelined. That is a very concrete example. I said the, the Dalit issue, for example. If you want to give an example, take the case of Dalit. Dalit is Dalit. <laughs> there is no Dalit Hindu, Dalit, Dalit Muslim, Dalit Christian. Uh, and uh, why did we begin to use that term by Dalit Christian? Because they have been sidelined. If there is only one term for the whole Dalit in India, we are very happy. They all should be promoted. So in the basic structures of uh, social life, Effort should be made to ensure that this difference in appearance or diversity is not a block for unity. This is a living reality which we all experience every moment of our life. We are different, but we are one. We are from different states, but we are Indians. We speak different languages, but we are Indian citizens. And this is the only way that India can survive. And this is what the British thought that we would never practice. But we are a living example of that united in diversity.
no, more eminence. will be given to you as you have more details in the coming days. No, eminence, one last question. Yeah. There's some news which is arriving, like uh, there's some Christians being accused by ASI in Afghanistan. And also one more news that uh, Narendra Modi has cancelled the, the Good Friday holiday. Is it all authenticate or how it has been, uh, what is the role yeah. of CBC? Just now, Bishop was discussing now yes. about the news. Yes. We have, uh, we have not received any official news on that this uh, cancelling of Good Friday. What is that? <laughs> yeah, there is a news which is coming Today? in uh, Gujarat. Uh, long back, there yeah. was a, they declared a day okay. which happened to be Good Friday. They declared it as Digital India Day. Okay. That was like Christmas as an administration day. No, that was good governance. Was Christmas that is gone. Okay. Okay. But they declared a day, which happened to be Good Friday this year, the, the year that is uh -huh. over 2017. Uh -huh. They called it Digital India Day. Okay. But this is what I I I I, I caution. Those responsible people in the administration should know the sentiments of each community and religious life, you know. <coughs> See, good governance day can be on a different day than Christmas. Digital, this one can be done, be done on a different day. Make it on Saturday. Okay. Why should you hurt the feeling of a community? By doing that, you are spoiling the image of the nation. That is what we are concerned. The other stories and so on, we are not sure on. As we have authentic news, we will respond to that. Right. I take this opportunity on behalf of uh, the office, where is the CBCI, uh, His Eminence Cardinal Clemens, uh, Secretary General uh, Bishop uh, Theodore Muskernes, and the Deputy Secretary General Mr. Joseph Chenayan, and all of us present here. We thank the Director of St. John's uh, Medical College, the Director, and the staff, the support staff at St. John's Medical College for having arranged uh, this uh, venue for the uh, press conference and providing us with all uh, the facilities. And also, in a very special day, thank your eminence for your erudite and a very uh, in-depth uh, press conference by which you have enlightened the press reporters here what is the 33rd CBCI general conference is all going to be and what are the points they're going to discuss at the meeting and what will be the outcome of that and the vision of the church in India you know to build a nation without any partition without any uh, you know discrimination to build the nation the Christianity is going all out to build the community based on the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that he came to this world to build the community as one community of God so I also take this opportunity also to thank the Bishop Theo for having prepared them uh, the press note and uh, organizing this program and co coordinating some as with us for this group. And also thank all of you for present here. Took time off. I know St. John's Medical College is not close to the city limits. It is a bit far out, but uh, many of you have taken trouble to be present here. Thank you very much for your presence. And look forward to please uh, disseminate this message uh, through your uh, good offices of the press. Uh, to other channels. Okay. Thank you very much. And tomorrow is the uh, inaugural mass at nine o'clock, and also the inaugural function at 11 a.m. Look forward to meeting you at the important event. Thank you very much.